Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we got you loud and clear. Okay. Um, my name is Olivia Jane Winters, and I'm a professional organizer and a business management consultant, and I live in Philadelphia. Um, I actually was asked to be a minority inspector in um, 3615. That's the ward in the division. Um, I was just purely doing this to help my mom out. She's a ward leader in a different area of the city. Um, I'm actually not a, I'm a registered Democrat and I just wanted to help and make sure it was a fair election. I don't, I don't care who wins. I care that it's a fair election. Um, I showed up to the polls at 6.30 in the morning. Um, immediately I was met with a hostile attitude from all of the people that I had to work with. That would be the majority inspector, the, uh, poll watcher the machine operator and a committee man who was electioneering in the polls. He was wearing, um, he was wearing shirts and a hat and a mask for who to vote for. Um, we are about like an hour and a half in, in the morning. Um, we have a long line of people. We must've had, I don't know, 60 people in line, um, in the building, snaking around the building. And um, a woman came up and said, I'd like to turn in my mail-in ballot so that I can vote in the booth. And uh, the girl who was clerking for me said, well, if you want to turn in your mail-in ballot, um, we're going to need to have you fill out this form. And the majority inspector is going to need to sign the form. The majority inspector had decided uh, in the middle of the morning to go home and was not in the polling place for over 45 minutes. Um, to my understanding, you as the minority, as a, um, I'm sorry, not the majority inspector, uh, the judge of elections, my apologies. She had gone home. And to my understanding, the judge of elections is not to leave the polling place. Um, so she was out of the building. We needed her to sign this form. Uh, the man who was electioneering and was a poll watcher, but also a committee man um, confronted myself and the clerk and said, you don't know what you're talking about. Anybody can sign the affidavit. Um, why don't you stop trying to cause problems? Why don't you shut up? Started getting in my face, cursing at me, telling me that I needed to be quiet, that I didn't know what I was talking about, and I should just learn to sit down and not say anything and just let it happen. And my clerk and I said, no, we're not gonna let that happen. That's ridiculous. It says very clearly in our training and on this sheet, that an affidavit needs to be signed by the judge of elections if somebody's going to turn in a mail-in ballot before they can go vote in the booth. We made her wait. Finally, the judge of elections came back. Um, not, of course, before he was threatening me. The uh, majority inspector threatened to slap me in the face. And uh, he told me that it was going to become a quote-unquote racial issue. I'm not really sure why that would become a racial issue. It has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with following procedure and making sure it's an honest election. Um, I felt threatened. I called my ward leader. The ward leader then called the commissioner for Philadelphia, Al Schmidt. Al Schmidt had me call um, and report that to the DA. Um, and then about an hour and a half after that, uh, the majority inspector told me that she wanted to vote because we had a lull in people coming to the polls, so it was pretty quiet. And I looked her name up so that she could sign the book, and it said that she needed to remit her mail-in ballot or vote provisionally. She said, oh, I threw that in the trash. And I said, well, then you have to vote provisionally. And the machine operator and the same uh, committee man slash poll watcher who was electioneering that I mentioned before um, got up in my face again, told me that I didn't belong there, that I needed to shut up, started cursing expletives at me again, told me that they were going to allow her to do that and that I better be quiet about it. And then they let her go into the polls and vote. And she did not vote provisionally at all. She voted and who knows, maybe she voted twice. Not to mention, it wasn't until I had actually called our ward leader, who had called the commissioner, who had called the DA, 
that they then sent representatives down to discuss this with me and defend me. I mean, I had maybe six men there because I was being threatened in the polling place. And um, his the committee man that I mentioned earlier who was threatening me then got his cousin involved who was working the polls as a poll watcher and was also wearing electioneering gear. She got up in my face, demanded to see my credentials, then uh, refused, tried to refuse to give them back to me, told me that they were illegitimate minority inspector certificates. Um, they basically told me they were going to call uh, my council rep and he was going to come down and make me leave. I just ridiculous threats. Um, I then testified in a hearing for the city of Philadelphia for them um, on the same on election day regarding uh, this harassment. And meanwhile, I had mentioned that um, until we had the deputy sheriff come down and tell us how to actually receive a mail-in ballot and how to vote provisionally, we were not doing it correctly. The judge of elections was not doing it correctly. And I cannot stress this enough. My brother had the same role as me as a minority inspector in a different polling place. And he said they were not doing it correctly either. I don't think that anybody actually really knew how to receive a mail-in ballot. Most of the books that we had to, um, to get your authorized signature, some would have a remit ballot um, little box that you could click and others didn't have that at all. So if somebody came in and remitted a ballot, I'd almost have to like hand write that in just to keep it as honest as possible. There was no place for that. So I don't see really how they were keeping track of that because you could easily, you could easily do both. And I mean, it happened in front of me. My majority inspector definitely voted and then went into the polls and voted again. Um, and I, I'm, unless you have questions, I'm not really sure. No. I think that's pretty much what happened. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Mastrano.